In this presentation, we're going to be looking at some of the improvements that have been made to the character workflow inside of Maya 2016 Extension 2. We're going to start off looking at the Quick Rig tool, and I love this tool because it allows anyone to get a character up and running inside of Maya in the matter of a few seconds. So the first thing that we're going to do is select a couple pieces of geometry that we want to have the Quick Rig execute on, and then we'll go up to the Skeleton command and bring up the Quick Rig tool. So we could use a single click workflow to have the quick rig go ahead and execute its command and make a rig for us. But for this example, what I want to do is actually walk you through the step-by-step -step process so you get a good understanding of what the quick rig is actually doing. So step one is adding your geometry into the quick rig tool. Pretty straightforward. The next thing we need to do is have the quick rig go through and develop some guides for it that are going to be used to position where the skeleton gets generated. There's different algorithms that it can use based on the type of geometry that it's starting from. And if you click on the question mark, it's going to give you a really good description as to what this type of algorithm excels at. So we're going to leave ours set to the imperfect mesh. So after that's done, you can go ahead and set up some basic guide settings about the number of joints you want, where you want to have the spine joints and neck joints and things like that. So we'll just leave those at the default and we'll have it go through and figure out where it's going to make those joints. Step three would be the user adjustment. So if you don't like where it put the joints, if you want to move where they are, this is your opportunity to go through and use these different tools to adjust, you know, maybe where, where his spine joint is or maybe where the elbow joint is. So after you're happy with that, you can go ahead and say, let's generate the skeleton. So when we make the skeleton, we have a couple of choices. Do we want to have a skeleton or do we have a, want to have a skeleton and a rig? And the control rig basically means put the human IK solver on there. So this is a solver that has the ability to solve the whole body. It's a full body human IK solver that's basically been around for a while. It's the solver that was inside of Motion Builder. It's an awesome solver if you're trying to animate characters or do anything with motion capture. So we're going to leave that control rig turned on and we'll have it go ahead and generate that for us now. So you can see Maya goes through, it makes a joint for us and it makes this really nice control rig. So now that we've done that, the final step is the skinning operation. We need to make a relationship between this joint, all, between the joints and all the vertices. And we're going to be using geodesic voxel binding skinning algorithm in this example because it really is the best choice. It came out about two years ago inside of Maya and it really changed the way people approach doing skinning because it's a simple tool that does exactly what you want. It's really pretty awesome. So we'll leave that guy set there. We'll go ahead and we'll hit create on that. It goes through, it does a skinning operation. So now what we have is we've got a character that's got this full human IK system on it. So what that means is if I extend this arm past its joint, joint rotations, it's going to be able to transfer that energy all the way through the body. So you can see we've got this really nice, sophisticated rig, but we still have some problems on the deformations here. When that arm goes up, it still looks a little weird there. And when his arm comes down, it's kind of tucking in there. So what we want to do now is fix those problems using the new shape authoring workflow. We now have a really awesome pose space deformer, and we're going to use that to do some corrective shapes based on joint angles. So let's go ahead and get our guy back to his stance pose. We'll grab this arm here. We don't need to see those joints anymore. We can just get the skeleton joints on. So we'll grab his elbow or his shoulder, and I'm going to just rotate this up. So if I rotate it up, you can see, well, there's the problem. So what we want to do is we want to use this pose space deformer to fix that. So we'll bring up our pose editor and what we're going to do is we're going to I'll just kind of push this window over here ever so slightly. What we're going to do is we're going to add this selected joint in as our, our driver for our new deformation, our, our kind of corrective shape that we're going to make. And we'll put our arm into a position where the mesh doesn't look so good. And we'll tell it that we want to go ahead and just simply add on a new pose. So we'll grab this guy right here and we'll say create pose. So with that done, we can now go in here and use our, our sculpting tools. So we have a variety of different sculpting brushes. These are actually the brushes that came out of Mudbox. So they're very high quality brush based tools that we can use to modify this mesh. And it's going to be a corrective shape, again, tied to that joint angle. So I just grabbed that grab brush. So it's going to let me kind of just push that arm in really quickly. I'm sort of grabbing that profile and just lifting that area. And I might want to have it pull up here a little bit. And I'm just trying to make this look a little bit more natural. So I might even actually grab this whole region right here and kind of push that up and maybe just ever so slightly pull, pull across there. So once I'm kind of happy with that, I can go in here and I can use our new sculpt or our new smooth target brush. So I'm just going to use my smooth target brush to sort of just average that out a little bit, try to get that word not to distort quite as much. And I might go in here and just paint across the top of this a little bit and kind of smooth out that target region right, right across there too. So that's looking pretty good. At any given time, I could also use this kind of Instead of just a grab brush, I could go in here and use just a simple sculpting brush. You know, if I wanted to really kind of drive that area up a little higher right there and really lift that 
that shoulder, you know, I could do something like that. And then I could go back in here and just smooth that out a little bit. So just by using a combination of painting and smoothing, you know, you can really start to get to an effect that looks a lot better than it did before. I might even want to smooth this region right, right across there a little bit more. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and turn off the edit. We can jump back into our rotation tool. So now what I can do is grab his shoulder and begin to rotate through this. And you can see that that deformation looks a whole lot more natural than it did before. Now we still have to go in here and fix this one. So let's go back down here. And we're going to go add one more pose. We get this back into our editing tools, our, our brush based tools. So we can kind of jump in here now and just, you know, pull this guy out ever so slightly in that area. You know, something like that looks a little bit better. Maybe push this in this way. Jump back into our sculpting brush. And I'm going to add a little bit of volume back into this, into this region right here, just using that simple sculpt geometry brush and just decrease my brush size ever so slightly and just sort of fill that area in right there. And then obviously, as I'm doing this, if I want to add more um, you know, smoothness to this, I can go back into my smooth target brush and just sort of kind of feather that out a little bit with that smooth target brush and maybe feather this region and smooth across that line and try to get a little bit less distortion in that area. So now what we've got is we've got something that actually looks pretty good, I bet, if we start to rotate through this. So you know, we did this in a matter of a couple minutes. Imagine if you spent more time on this. This really will let you take your characters to that next level. And keep in mind that this, this, these deformation tools that you're, that you're sculpting with and painting with, these pose space deformations, can also be used to paint actual muscles. You know, maybe when the bicep moves or something like that, you could use the same workflow to have that joint angle drive the actual bicep movement. So that is basically it. So we're gonna finish off by looking at the shape editor that replaces the blend shape window. And it brings with it lots of improvements to the workflow. And we'll start off with some basics. So I've got a slider for my left eye blinking and a slider for my right eye blinking. With the shape editor, I can now take both of those guys and group them together. And I now have an overall multiplier of those blend shape sliders. So if this one was dialed down a little bit here, you can see if I go to zero, it's gonna be um, essentially totally off. If I go to a value of one, the right eye is gonna be completely blinked, but the left eye is still gonna be around 50 percent because this group is basically a multiplier of all the targets that are grouped underneath it. Now at any given time, if I wanted to change the targets that were under there, I can simply drag and drop those on it, into it, or out of it to adjust whether or not they're going to get affected by that grouping. So it's a really simple thing, but it's very, very cool. Another thing that we've added is the ability to solo something. So if I wanted to see, well, what does Pucker by itself look like? If I right mouse click on top of that, you can see that I can just really quickly go in here and solo the effect of that slider. Everything else is grayed out. I'm only looking at what the Pucker slider is doing. Obviously, if I wanted to have everything else turned back on, all we have to do is simply go back and unsolo it. So those are a few of the little workflow improvements made to the Shape Editor, but we've also made some really nice enhancements to the Deformer, and I'm gonna show you a few of those now. So let's just kind of zero out the, uh, the group of all that stuff there. And what I wanna do is talk about a combination Deformer. So what this does is it allows you to take a couple of sliders, a variety of sliders, and say when these two guys are at their maximum value, I want it to achieve a slightly different blend shape. So we're gonna do something like when Pucker and Matt are both on, I want to have it achieve its own target or its own blend that we're going to modify or make. So we'll just add to our selection both of those guys, and we're going to right mouse click on top of it and say, add combination target. So I now have this combination target for Mad and Pucker. What does that mean? Well, I'm in my edit mode, so if I go up here and I just grab something like my grab brush, and we select on our piece of geometry, I'm just gonna kind of push in this face a little bit here, and we'll push in this face a little bit here, and I'm gonna make this kind of extreme so you can really see what it's doing. Um, you know, I want it to be a little drastic, but you'll get the idea of what, what's happening here. So we've got this guy doing this kind of really crazy look, and that's going to happen only when we've got Mad and Pucker maximized out. So let's just deselect everything here, and if we zero out Pucker, you can see that it doesn't go to that Mad Pucker combo. If we just move Mad up and down, it's just a standard Mad slider, and then obviously if we just move Pucker up and down, it's just a standard Pucker slider, but if we start to dial in both of these guys at the same time, when they reach 100%, it's going to go and achieve that new target. And you can see the amount of percentage weight that that target's being reached at right down here. So really pretty cool new enhancement made to the actual deformer. Another thing that we've done that's kind of nice is we added in the ability to do relative in-betweens. So let's go ahead and look at that. Let's do right mouse click on top of this mad, and we're going to create an in-between. And I'm going to tell it that it's going to be a relative in-between for this. So if we go ahead and we apply that, 
I've now got this new in-between that I can adjust for when my guy's going into this mad pose. I want to have him really just over-exaggerate those lips a lot. So we're going to go ahead and hit the edit button on this one more time, jump into that grab brush, select our geometry that we want to paint on and sculpt on. And then I'm just going to really pull this out so that you can get a good sense of what that in-between is doing. And again, you know, I'm, I'm kind of overdriving these, but the idea is so that you can see clearly what's happening with that. So if we unedit that guy, you can now see as it transitions from zero to mad, it's going to pass through that in-between shape. And because I've used the relative option, I have the ability to adjust the overall influence of, of how that sculpting is going to work, what the shape of that profile is going to look like as it transitions in between that, how the interpolation is going to happen is as it transitions through that in-between. So those are some of the improvements that have been made to the shape editor inside of Maya 2016 extension 2. Thanks for taking the time to check it out.